Okay, guys, here's the deal. Today's Thursday, meaning, meaning, we are legit close. We are so close from all great shows that are coming out this month. Seven Deadly Sins Season 2, uh, Takashi Kaji Season 2, you know, the candy anime. We are legit close to our favorite returning shows. Now, today's Thursday, meaning you probably didn't expect me to do videos on Thursday, but there were some, but today there were some interesting shows. One of which was a show that I wanted to talk, one of which I, I didn't want to talk about this show, but from watching this first episode, it got, it got a glimpse of my eyes like, wow, this show is freaking good. So, before I get into that detail, look, today we got some interesting shows, interesting shows that were really fantastic to watch, you know, it was okay shows. One of which was a show, like, uh, it was more like a romance thing about a girl, young high school girl who's dating, who likes this 45-year-old manager and a divorced single father type of the son, you know, it's kind of like, it's romantic, that one is okay. And you got this other show who's like, uh, sort of like a re another world my smartphone type vibe thing going on. Like if you watch a show, you gonna understand it look like a, another world my smartphone all over again, the way I see it. But this other show that came out today, I felt in touch with this show. It was like comedy shows are really great these days. And this right here is the exact same thing of why this show is great. It's called How to Keep a Mummy. Not how to train a dragon, how to keep a mummy. Now, how to keep your mummy is this. It's basically your comedy slice of life anime about a boy named Sora. Now, hold on a second. I know what y'all thinking. Sora is the main character's name. Like, it's like, why a name is like Sora? I mean, the only two Soras that I know so far in the lifetimes of me that... Like, the only Sora I know is Kingdom Hearts Sora and Sora from No Game, No Life. That's pretty much it. Yeah, that's it. That's all I can think of. That's all the Sora's I know. But this guy, you know, living a normal life, you know, all that stuff, living with this girl who lives next, oh, and the, you know, sister, got a paper deadline. Matter of fact, her hair looked like the girl from... Uh, sister is all you need. You know, the girl with the white hair, that perverted girl who always like to get naked and eat the egg. She has that hair. Like, if you look at the hair, not the face, but the hair point is sticking out. It kind of looks like her. But anyway, he lives a normal life. His uh, father sent him a big-ass package, and it's a casket. I mean, a coffin, whatever. And, and, it's, and it's, it's funny because the moment he opened it, you would have thought, he would have thought, that it's, oh, it's such a mummy. Hell to the fucking no. It ain't a mummy. It's a, I mean, I'm sorry. It's a mummy, but not what you, not what he expected. It's like this size. Like, I'm going to put this out. The size of a little candle mix. You see this little candle? This small little ribbon shaped candle thing? That's how the size of that mummy is. That mummy is so cute to have. It is the most adorable little thing to have about this tiny size. And it is so freaking cute. Now, I want to make a point in this show. I want to make a point. This is the first episode. What don't you do? You don't spoil the sh You don't spoil it. Like, don't, don't show us characters who are going to be in it. Don't do that. Like, the wallpaper says how to keep a mummy. And it shows... The, mum, the little mummy and Sora, that's it. But if you look at the freaking opening of the show, it's really good. The only problem is though, you're showing us his friends, you're showing us the little critters we're gonna see in the long run. Why would you do that? Like, are, it, it's already confirmed who's keeping what pet. Why? Don't do that. Now I know who's gonna keep what. Like the girl, like this girl, like the, his, like this girl, she gonna keep this miniature, Size looking chars are a Pokemon type thing. I don't care if it looked like a Dragonite, but still, you're spoiling it. Don't do that. <sighs> Sorry. Now, so, you know, he's kind of like anxious with his... At first, he was a dick. He was a little dick. I mean, he didn't 
he kind of pushed that mummy away because he's so creepy looking. But it's so cute. I mean, it's so cute that he, is, he eats and drinks. But I would love to know, from an anime perspective, this is anime logic, but I would love to know how that little mummy is able to eat and drink. I'm dying to know. Like, he munching like this with bandages all around him, and I want to see how he is able to eat and drink. How is that physically possible for this little mummy? You know, it's... It's like, what? I, 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 I don't know how I'm going to say, but yeah, like that. <laughs> like that. Anyway. So Sora uh, read everything about him, you know, gave him a name and all that, and he named him Miku. Now, the mummy's perspective, the mummy, you know, being had, can't talk, he tried. Like, the cuteness of how he barking at the dog, like, bark, bark, it is so cute. Matter of fact, it's so cute that he even got the mindset, like, he named me, so we're family. It is so cute, and the way how cute it is, it was crawling from the back all the way up. Kind of like... I don't know how I describe this scene. <laughs> I'm trying to describe. I don't want to put Ash and Pikachu in right now with Pikachu clamping on Ash's shoulder, but Miku trying to do the exact same thing, clamping on, <laughs> clamping on Sora's shoulder is so cute. But how to keep a mummy? The way I see this, like how to keep a, how to train how to keep a trained dog in the house. Like if you're in school and the dog is there, that's what it's like. Like how to keep a mummy there. I don't know how, but it's so uh great to see that but but anyway this was your regular slice of life comedy thing going on with the adventures of sora and miku the mummy so it's great to see you know how he's able to make friends how he's no i'm not friends he already got friends how he and miku get along really really well that's that's the whole premises of it in this show right now but the ending I, oh my god, guys, the ending was freaking lit. He, like, they, they did so many, like, you, when you hear the background of music, it sounds like an Egypt song, Egyptian song, but the way how they dance was just like, hum, choo, 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 and hum, choo, 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 choo. it was so, like, they were doing so many different maneuvers, especially when they did the end like this, and they wave. That is, a, that is dope. <laughs> that is dope. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. It was funny to watch. Oh my god. But again, the opening in the end, it gave it away who's going to be in the show. So I already know who we, what pets we're going to have and what shit, but damn. But anyway, episode one was really relaxable. It was funny. It was a way to introduce characters and having a little miniature mummy as a friend, being part of the family is really great as well. So, yeah, we could say that we can say that as well but this is one of those shows that I, when i was do i think i could do reviews on this show yeah because it's comedy and it's slice of life and there's questions that i still want to know about mummies like this person so who am i to say well, i would do a review on this but that's how i that's what i thought about this first episode learning more and more about this little mummy but that's it so, tune in next week for episode two of How to Keep a Mummy and Not How to Train a Dragon.